Hi everyone, uh, my name is Teja and in this video I'm going to do a walkthrough of setting up a Jupyter Notebook server and accessing it from your browser. So for this you'll need a terminal. So on Mac and uh, Linux you can get the terminal directly. On Windows you'll have to install a software such as Git Bash. Uh, a link to that is provided in the email instructions I sent to, sent out to you know the teams. Uh, so let's start. Uh, so let's say you're on a Linux terminal. So you first type SSH and see if SSH command is there or not. If not, then you can use uh, uh, some package manager or from command line, you can install this SSH uh, client. Uh, so so OK. I think the last part is getting cut off, but uh, it's fine. I'm just installing uh, SSH right now. Once it's installed, we'll try to log into the uh, log into the server. Okay. So while we wait, uh, one of the important points which uh, uh, we'll see towards the end is that we'll try to you know, log into the SSH um, into the server without the use of a password. Okay. So SSH client now is available. So let's SSH. So SSH minus P, minus P stands for port. So let's use team six credentials, then one dot. Um, so let's use team six. And if you do this, then you'll get uh, Initially, when you try to connect, you'll get a initial question, which is, are you sure you want to connect? You say yes, you'll not see that again. Um, then you paste the password here. OK. OK, so we logged in. I don't know why this is. Uh... OK, so we logged in. And uh, so this is what you'll see, um, some information. Maybe system restart is required. So you can see that you have logged in. Who am I? I'll tell you that your this is your username, Team6. And um, for example, you can also check who all is uh, logged in. So with a command like W, so you're the only person who's logged in. So we've logged in. So what is the next steps? Um, let's see. So step three would be now if you look at this, I have uh, you know an installer anaconda installer uh, file here, and also uh, we would now want to do two things. One is to install anaconda, which is by just doing dot slash anaconda, um, and it says okay, review the license. You press uh, enter, uh, go through the license, and you agree. And it says this is the location that we we're going to install it. You can press enter, and it'll take some time to install. So, in the meantime, um, you can do another thing. So, I have another terminal open to the same. Uh, where I can again SSH into the same thing. So SSH minus P. Okay. Some. 
okay too many authentication failures let's see okay we connected again let me just um, shrink the terminal a little bit okay so there's are two different uh, logins we actually don't okay we actually don't need it but it's okay so this got completed uh, you can press yes and you want to install microsoft vs code probably no and that's it so so we have now uh, we just had the installer before now we have an anaconda 3 and uh, if you type python okay type which python you'll see that uh, the root the location of python script is still user slash bin slash python to change this immediately you can do a source dot uh, bash uh, i guess bash rc and then if you do a which python you'll see that we are now looking at anaconda's python so if i type python here we'll get python 3 uh, by default uh, so that's good and now what we want to do is uh, uh, two things one is to start jupyter jupyter notebook so that for that we had this command which was uh, so let's do two things actually um, um, so let's create a password for Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so I'm gonna create a directory called dot uh, Jupyter, and then I'm gonna type Jupyter Notebook password. Okay, so let's say I give a password like five seventy six, five seventy six repeat. Okay, so the password is written in that directory dot Jupyter. Okay, now we can do Jupyter notebook um, minus minus no browser and minus minus port you can choose any port um, ideally you don't want to have any conflict with other teams so choose let's say it's team 6 or 9996 let's say and then you can press um, enter okay so the Jupyter notebook is running now we have to connect to this but this is running on the server so you cannot directly connect to this so what you need to do is again um, okay let's exit this ssh connection so we did an ssh here right so now we are back to my you know our local terminal so instead of doing ssh now let's use the other command which was uh, minus n minus f minus l and then local host some local number so 9001 9006 let's say uh, and then local host this was the port that we started the jupyter notebook on and then username and at the rate of ip okay so this is the command and this command is there in the instructions that i sent you guys so now let's again paste it so okay so now what should you know when you paste the password and press enter you'll still be in the local host okay whereas what has happened is uh, now this address this is a think of this as a url is mapping to the url this url in the server side so what we can do now is just open local host let's say 9006 okay so now you got the jupyter notebook interface you can you know enter the password which is 576 in this case and that's it so save password not needed now and that's it so this is your uh, here you can now create a new uh, python 3 um, python notebooks another thing that you can do right now is actually um, okay so i started jupyter notebook so I can actually control C and shut it down. Okay. If you shut this down, then you'll not have a you'll not your session will not work. Okay, actually I should have control C, yes. And then you can actually use screen to keep the keep the server running, which means uh, uh, okay actually. Jupyter notebook. 
the space between them and then what is the command minus minus port equal to 9996 and minus minus no browser yeah this is pretty much it now okay let's let's run this so this is the usual re i just restarted the server now you can actually so screen is something that i'll post a link to uh, it's it's a way to run commands and uh, detached from this you know kind of you can close your computer and the thing the program running on the server will still run so you don't have to be logged into the server to run this command always uh, run for example commands like jupyter notebook always so that's fine so uh, let's open another terminal and this is again in the server as you can see from the uh, name here now what i want to do is uh, since you wanted to run uh, some Python scripts, so let me use actually git clone. Actually, I don't even know if git is available. So let's see git. Oh yeah, git is available. So git clone. Um, I'm gonna clone on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna clone the uh, repository for um, the course web page actually, which will give me all the Python scripts. So let me just call it um, for simplicity. I just changed the name, but this is a, this is essentially a repository. It has various things, but just um, go to 576 and you'll see that it has all the Python scripts. So what does this mean for me? I can just go to, you know, this is my local browser. I'm looking at, uh, I just created this folder, right? CDS, I can click on it. And go to 576 and here you can see all the commands so let's go to feed forward network classifier example i can open this it opened it and i can try the first time if i run some things may not be available let's see oh matplotlib and numpy are available through anaconda so i'm just uh, now these files are not available data files so to get those data files you'll have to run for example there's this data linear classifier. So if I run this, I have the files. And this is the same data. So you can keep executing shift enter. Um, of course, you need to understand what's going on in each step. So here I'm training the um, linear model, in this case, a multi-class classifier. Um, so that's with running the uh, Python uh, running the Jupyter server using the code, you know, scripts available from our course website, and uh, accessing it from our uh, web browser uh, and connecting it to um, the server. Right. So now what I can do is uh, the Jupyter notebook was still running, so I can uh, actually exit uh, from the server and still it will keep running. Okay. So that's fine. But what I actually want to do now is to uh, SSH without password, okay? So which is kind of critical actually. So so for that, I'll make a directory called .ssh. Oh, it's already there. Uh, why is it there? But, okay, it's already there. Um, but uh, what we want is to create a authorized keys uh, file. I'm using Vim as just a text editor. So uh, just type this and you'll get a prompt. Here, what we're going to do is, uh, so we are in, right, so I've changed the tab. So now I'm in the local, you know, my current machine, which is like a Ubuntu machine here. So this guy doesn't have a .ssh folder. So what I'm going to do is do an SSH key gen to I, I just executed this command ssh key then and I'm pressing enter. I'm not really changing anything. What it does is creates dot ssh folder and it creates uh, two files. I mean, if this dot ssh folder is already there, it'll create these two files, idrsa and idrsa.pub. So I can do dot pub and get this, get this part. Oops, I shouldn't have right. Um, okay. Okay, that 
does not need it okay I did not need that but I just want to copy this and uh, paste it here okay so where did I paste it I pasted it into the authorized keys file so if I do a look into the authorized keys file that has this this um, um, blurb right so that's good so maybe I have to I'm not sure if I do this like okay some uh, changing the permissions of that file now what I can do is I'm oh, sorry now I can do I can exit from so I disconnected from the server so when next time I type this command it directly logged in you don't have to use the uh, password anymore so that's the uh, uh, nice thing about copying your SSH key and putting it on the server side okay so we have pretty much set up everything um, and uh, with this you can get uh, started on your assignments and projects um, thank you for watching